Hello, Bruce Fulton here. Uh, this is the third lecture on database normalization. We'll be talking about third normal form, uh, so let's get started. Now, in the previous lecture, we talked about uh, second normal form. Uh, second normal form uh, involved relations with primary keys that involved uh, two or more attributes. That is, uh, the primary key uh, was a compound key. Uh, and we said that relations with a single primary key, that is, uh, and a primary key that uh, uh, was defined by a single attribute were automatically in second normal form. Uh, and we needed to start with second normal form uh, compound keys because uh, in, in many cases resolving uh, a relation uh, into second normal form created uh, tables that uh, uh, were in... Um, uh, had only a single primary key. Uh, but relations in second normal form can still have uh, problems with redundancy, that is, uh, once we resolved uh, issues uh, with tables and put them into second normal form, uh, there may still be problems. And, and in fact, uh, the, we see the same kinds of problems uh, with relations that are properly in second normal form. Uh, that um, uh, we need to resolve with uh, tables to get them into third normal form. So let's take a look at some of the statements uh, and we'll see that we have really basically the same issues uh, as we did with putting tables into second normal form. We're just dealing with uh, a single single attribute primary key. Uh, so uh, th there are uh, again uh, several different ways of putting this. Uh, some of the phrasing is, is a little bit cumbersome, I think. Uh, but we'll, we'll parse these and show you exactly what we mean. And then we've got a couple of simple examples, I think, that will just make this crystal clear what third normal form is. Uh, and it looks very much like second normal form, except we've just got one, one attribute acting as primary key. So first one of these, each non-primary key attribute provides a fact that is independent of other non-key attributes and depends only on the key. Uh, I'm going to zoom right in on the problem here. Uh, let's suppose we've got a table of customers, uh, and in that table uh, we want to indicate who the customer representative is uh, for that customer. So here's our customers table, and we've got the customer number, uh, the customer name, uh, we've got a balance, a credit limit, and then the representative number. Uh, and to make it easy on ourselves, um, in addition to the representative number, we got the representative uh, last name and first name. That'll make it convenient uh, for us when we're making a, um, uh, a look through the table uh, to see who the representative's um, uh, name is if we want to um, uh, perhaps call the customer and refer to the representative. Uh, uh, you might be suspecting that uh, this is going to be our problem. Uh, and in fact, it is. So when we go back and look at this um, non-primary key attribute provides a fact that is independent of other non-key attributes and depends only on the key, um, the representative number does depend on the customer number. Um, the customer has a single representative represented by the uh, number. But the representative last name and first name don't depend on the customer number. The representative last name and first name depend on the representative number. Uh, so here we've got a non-primary key attribute providing a fact that is um, uh, does not depend on the key. It depends on another attribute. So we've got a problem with the way uh, this first statement is uh, arranged. So here's another statement. Each non-key attribute is dependent on the primary key and only on the primary key. Non-key attributes are not derived and are not dependent on other non-key attributes. So uh, clearly we've got a problem with that. We've got a non-key attribute here um, that is not dependent on the primary key. Uh, we've got a non-key attribute um, that's not dependent on other non-key attributes. No, it is. It's dependent on this, another non-key attribute. So we've got a problem with the way the second one is phrased. Uh, third, all non-key attributes are not dependent on any other non-key attributes. Um, well, we've got a non-key attribute that is dependent on another non-key attribute. 
Um, all attributes are not non-transitively dependent on the primary key. Um, the non-transitively might, might be a little bit obscure. Uh, maybe you remember from, I don't know, 7th, 8th grade, whenever they teach about A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. Um, that's, that's an obscure way of saying uh, rep name uh, is, is related to rep num. Rep num is related to uh, customer num. So we, we have a sort of a transitive uh, thing going on here, um, but the attribute is not non-transitively related on the primary key. That's a little bit of, uh, of an obscure way of putting it, but uh, it works. We also have uh, another way of saying this that, that is slightly different than these other phrasings, uh, which is the only determinants are candidate keys. Um, and determinant if, if, if the representative last name is dependent on repnum, another way of saying that is that repnum determines the representative last name. So repnum is a determinant. Uh, that means that when we say the only determinants are candidate keys, repnum is a determinant of rep last name, but repnum is not a candidate to be the key for this relationship. So we have a problem with rep name uh, and repnum because repnum is a determinant for these two attributes but repnum is not a candidate key for this relationship. That's subtly different from uh, these other statements. It ends up meaning about the same. This actually is a form of what's called Boyce cod normal form, which is a little bit higher level of third normal form. Uh, I'm not going to get into the distinction here. You'll see this in some places. I'm not going to make anything of it other than to just state it here. Uh, but you will see this, uh, and uh, some people make a, a fair amount out of this. Uh, it's a subtle distinction, uh, but that's all I'm going to say about it. So uh, let's take a look at what um, uh, this looks like in practice. Let's go to our um, problem and solution. Uh, you might be thinking that we're going to see the same kind of issue with redundancy uh, here in, in these fields. Uh, as we did in second normal form, uh, and you'd be correct. Uh, so let's look at the uh, 3NF uh, first example I have set up to look at. Uh, here we have this set up as a table, so we have our customer number, customer name, balance, credit limit, uh, representative number, uh, and then the last name and the first name. Uh, and here you can see the, rep the uh, redundancy. Uh, I have customer number 126 with uh, Rafael Campos. Um, as the representative and uh, customer number 502 uh, with the same representative. Uh, and here's the redundancy. We might have uh, representative number 15 if we were to try to um, uh, update uh, this information here. Uh, we might conceivably have uh, an anomaly, update anomaly here. Uh, so clearly the information is to split this off. Uh, this is simply a matter of pulling this information out, putting it in a different table. Uh, we come up with a solution uh, that involves uh, keeping the representative number in the customer table and, and then just having a, a, a second table uh, with a customer representatives uh, listed only one time over here. We can easily pull a, a report or query that ties the representative number to the representative name. Uh, and if we need to update the representative name, it's listed only once in the database. So that's a rather simple solution. Uh, this, um, uh, these tables are now in third normal form. Let's take a look at another example. It looks almost exactly the same. The solution is slightly different. Uh, and then I'll show you the reason for the difference. Uh, here we have a table with an employee uh, ID, first name and last name. Uh, and we have that employee associated with a department. Uh, the department uh, shows the uh, department number and the department name. Uh, so here uh, the issue is that the department name uh, is dependent on department number, 
not the employee ID. So the department number uh, is related to the employee ID because uh, the department number is associated with the employee ID, but the part department name is uh, related to the department number. The department number uh, determines the department name, uh, but the department number uh, is a determinant uh, of the department name, but it's not a candidate key. Uh, in other words, this is not uh, potentially a key field for this table. Uh, so the solution uh, is very similar to the solution we just looked at. But it varies just a little bit. Uh, in this solution, uh, we've created two additional tables. Uh, so I've pulled off the department. That part's very similar. Uh, but instead of retaining the department number in the employee table, I've actually created a junction table. Uh, and so we have a department uh, with the department uh, number and the department name. Uh, we, we've eliminated the redundancy here, so if we needed to uh, update finance or manufacturing, we only have one place to do it. And the junction table here uh, allows us to associate uh, the employee ID uh, with the department. So uh, if you take a look at this solution uh, and the solution we created before, here we created two tables. Here we created three. And here's where you have to consider the business case that you're trying to solve. Here, we clearly have a case where each customer only has one customer rep. Uh, and there's no need to create a junction table because uh, if this customer were to get a different customer representative, then we would just simply change this. Uh, here, we allow for the possibility that an employee might be associated with more than one department. So we have a potential situation where um, we might have a case uh, where an employee name uh, might be associated with multiple departments or vice versa. So this would be a junction uh, table that would potentially allow a many-to-many -many relationship. So when you solve these problems and you're doing your uh, normalization, you really need to be careful to consider the business case, what you're trying to solve. Uh, in order to do the uh, in order to do the normalization, uh, so something to think about. Uh, but I think you can see the similarities between the second uh, normal form and the third normal form. Second normal form, we're concerned with compound keys. Uh, that is, the primary key is comprised of two or more attributes. Third normal form, we really are looking at tables uh, where we only have one attribute as the primary key. Uh, but the issue is the same. Uh, we need to eliminate the redundancy, uh, and the solution is actually the same as well. So thank you very much for watching. I, I hope those two, uh, two forms are clear. We have one left to go, one final lecture. That would be fourth normal form. Thank you very much for watching.